Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. Amen. Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and His risen Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, and on this Pentecost Sunday from the Holy Spirit, who comes to live and breathe into us new life. Please join me uh, in your homes in this responsive call to worship as we call upon the Spirit to bless us in our time together. Come to Jesus, you who are thirsty. Alleluia! Drink deeply of the Holy Spirit. Alleluia! Let your heart overflow with the living water that renews the face of the earth. Alleluia! Thanks be to God. Amen. to us. So I'm going to have you join with me and say these words you see on your screen. Let us become more aware of your presence. Let us experience the glory of your goodness. Let us become more aware of your presence. Let us experience the glory of your goodness. Let us become more aware of your presence, Lord. Let us experience the glory of your goodness. Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. Come flood this place and fill the atmosphere. Your glory, God, is what our hearts long for, to be overcome, to be overcome by your presence, Lord. Amen. How many are your works, Lord? 
In wisdom you made them all. The earth is full of your creatures. There is the sea, vast and spacious, teeming with creatures beyond number, living things both great and small. There the ships go to and fro, and Leviathan, which you formed to frolic there. All creatures look to you to give them their food at the proper time. When you give it to them, they gather it up. When you open your hand, they are satisfied with good things. When you hide your face, they are terrified. When you take away their breath, they die and return to dust. When you send your spirit, they are created. And you renew the face of the ground. May the glory of the Lord endure forever. May the Lord rejoice in His works. He who looks at the earth and it trembles, who touches the mountains and they smoke. I will sing of the Lord all my life. I will sing praise to my God as long as I live. May my meditation be pleasing to Him. As I rejoice in the Lord, praise the Lord, my soul. Praise the Lord. Amen. Jesus Christ be and abide with each of you on this Pentecost Sunday and also with you my friends we invite you now to ex to extend Christ's peace and the blessing of the Holy Spirit to your neighbors your friends with a text or some other form of communication or perhaps at your home with a hug or however you might want to extend that peace to your neighbor let us share the peace of Christ Well, we welcome you to worship on this Pentecost Sunday. What a glorious day it is. What a beautiful day we've been blessed with here in Sheboygan. Those of you watching in other parts of the country, we're thankful you're here. We're praying that you are blessed with a beautiful day as we have here as well. Thank you for joining us. We thank you for uh, all of our community that continues to join us on Facebook and through our website. And uh, so we're only two weeks away now from... Uh, when we will have a limited reopening of the church for public worship. So June 14, we'll have uh, about uh, half of the congregation is invited, and as many as feel comfortable coming will be here. So you'll see a little different look then. But next week, we do have our uh, last Sunday of streaming only, uh, Lord willing, assuming there's no change in the health uh, patterns here in the county. And uh, we want to remind you, next Sunday is uh, Lord's Supper, and we'll be preparing for that in a moment. But if you have, um, you want to make sure next week, if you're going to be at home to uh, watch us, to also have your, uh, some version of your bread and some version of your cup ready to share as we celebrate the Lord's Supper next week. Uh, a few joys and concerns to pass along as well. Um, many of you know that we had our walk for water, which was a virtual walk this year. And uh, so praise the Lord, uh, Claire uh, Alger, who heads that up uh, for us each year, she reported to me that uh, $4,205 was raised for uh, providing clean water for 84 children. And isn't that a great blessing to think that uh, the work that the people did who walked for water virtually this year blessed 84 children with clean water. We, uh, this was also a partnership with other with Christ Community Church, which and we thank them for their donation of fourteen hundred dollars through their April Kingdom cause. So what a blessing to be able to minister together with our friends at Christ Community uh, in this ministry as well as in other ways. We also. Uh, want to 
uh, let you know as you are preparing to come back to worship, check out our uh, safely opening plan and make sure you're aware of that. Text me or email me or call me with any questions that you have and we'll continue to be uh, ready for your uh, arrival as we begin that on June 14 and then the second half of the church is invited June 21 for that. Uh, in the uh, prayer concerns, we continue to lift up Jim Graven and Joel Messner and Niles Peroni, who are undergoing uh, cancer uh, treatment and uh, therapy and for Niles as he uh, is going through uh, his stages of uh, palliative care. So we want to be in prayer for Niles and Harriet, especially at this time. We want to continue to be in prayer for Kathy Reitz and Carla Swart as they continue to await uh, the scheduling of their much-needed surgery. Uh, a little bit later in the uh, worship service when we have our offering, I want to let you know that uh, we're so thankful for the way you've been so generous to us. Uh, again, through May, our uh, giving continues to exceed what it was a year ago for each of the months of March, April, and now May. So today, as our way of saying thank you to the Holy Spirit, uh, we are going to all of the online offerings today, every online offering dollar that comes in today, uh, whether it's through the Facebook page or whether through PayPal, is all going to go, 100% of it is going to our world missions to support our uh, world missionaries. We have missionaries in Greece uh, serving in Thailand, uh, the people of Thailand serving in Russia um, and serving uh, in Haiti. And we uh, have other uh, world mission uh, efforts as well, including World Vision. Uh, we support one of the children uh, through the uh, Walk for Water. So your giving today will be a great blessing to those people. We're going to give them a mid-year offering with whatever we can raise today uh, so that they, uh, if they've been suffering from a lack of income due to COVID-19 related problems, they will have a blessing as you have blessed us. So today's the day. Uh, and if you uh, prefer to send your offering in by envelope, uh, but through the mail or drop it off or whatever, you can just write on there, if you prefer, for world missions. Uh, and then the rest of it will go to our operations as normal. Well, we are gathering together for uh, the Lord's Supper next week, and I wanted to... Uh, give us an opportunity to prepare our hearts for that. And there's a liturgy for this. This is going to be the last time that we celebrate the Lord's Supper uh, virtually um, and or in person until probably after Labor Day. So because of the difficulty of doing that all uh, safely in the sanctuary here, so we want to make it as uh, special a memory of Christ next week as we can. So, beloved in the Lord Jesus Christ, we propose to celebrate next Sunday with the help of God, the sacrament of the Lord's Supper. We come to the table to commune with our Lord. We come in awe and reverence for the place where we stand is holy ground. Here the Lord offers us the manna of life. If we are to experience the celebration with our Lord and be nourished by the Spirit, let us examine ourselves first. Then eat the bread and drink the cup. The benefit is great, if with penitent hearts and living faith we receive the Lord's Supper. Let us acknowledge our sin before our merciful God with full intention of amending our lives. Let us make restitution for all injuries and wrongs done to others. Let us forgive those who have offended us as we ourselves have been forgiven. All children of the covenant, be reconciled with one another and then come joyfully to the banquet. If you are in need of help and counsel, then go and open yourself to a wise, discreet, and understanding brother or sister in the faith and confess your sin. Call me or contact me or Pastor Don or one of our uh, elders and they reach out to you to uh, offer you an opportunity to open up your heart and to bring your needs before the Lord. Receive spiritual counsel so that you may experience assurance of God's pardon and strengthening of your faith. Amen. I invite you now to join me in this time of prayer as we come before the Lord 
on this Pentecost Sunday. Holy God, like a rushing wind, when your Spirit moves upon us, as it moved over the first disciples on the day of Pentecost, be to us like a purifying fire that your Spirit sears into our hearts and minds the message of salvation as we gather to hear your Word today. Send your Spirit upon your church in this time and place. Stir up our courage. Rouse up our prophetic witness. So we may join with the disciples and Christians throughout the centuries to proclaim the Word and your mighty deeds of power in Jesus Christ. Lord, we pray in these difficult times in our nation that you will help your church to be salt. Lord, our nation is at a boiling point. We are at a boiling point where the water is just about to go right over the edges, Lord, if it has not already. The anxiety and the stress and the divisions of opinion and the, the anger that is caused by uh, the different approaches that people want to see taken to the responses to COVID-19... And we see how that is now spilled over into the anxiety and the, the outrage that has come into the, the recent killing of this black man by a white police officer or officers. Lord, we pray that as these symptoms of boiling continue to appear around our nation, that you will help your church to be salt. Because, Lord, we know that salt reduces the boiling point. It will reduce the boiling temperature of this nation. Lord, help us as your church in every community that we serve to be a voice that is salt in a boiling pot. We as your church, Lord, we denounce violence. We as your church, Lord, denounce criminal looting and stealing and theft and harm to property, harm to people. So, Lord, we pray that you will help your church to join with those who will find out who are those that are the anarchists on the left and on the right who refuse to support peaceful protest, but instead want to use this as an opportunity to create unrest and division, further division, even civil war within our nation. Help your church, Lord, to find its voice and to speak words of peace into these boiling circumstances. Help us to speak, Lord, on behalf of our uh, African American and all other people of color, brothers and sisters, who need the church to speak up for them, for those who are unheard, as Martin Luther King Jr. says, that we would be a voice for the unheard. Help us also, Lord, to be a voice that says we know that all law enforcement and all uh, those who are in positions of authority should not be painted with one broad brush for the rogue officers who, in what appears to be an act of murder, killed this man and others in our country, in what appear to be acts of racial violence. Help us, Lord, to speak for justice as well. May we not step back from the precipice that our nation finds itself in, but rather may we demand of our leaders, every one of our leaders, that they speak unity and peace and calm, that they speak comfort, that they speak against division, that they speak for a people who will be united Lord, we pray that your church will find its voice, 
that you will sprinkle us into this boiling pot and give us the ability to have the effect of bringing the peace of Christ, a peace that passes understanding, to a nation that is desperate for someone, someone to stop speaking against the other, but to speak for all. May that be our work, Lord. We pray for all those who need your healing touch, who need your special presence, especially those in our congregation, Jim and Joel and Niles and Kathy and Carla. Bless the work of this church, Lord. Bless your churches around the world on this Pentecost Sunday. May we receive anew the breath of Christ that fills us with your Spirit as we seek to be the presence of peace in a troubled world. We pray this in the name of Jesus Christ and by the power of your Holy Spirit. Amen. <clears throat> if you would like to support our uh, work as you have been doing so faithfully, there you may do so by sending it in. There's also online options, which, of course, we encourage you, especially today, to consider uh, either through the uh, website, which is a PayPal or credit card uh, payment access, uh, or you can find other electronic means as well. At this time, uh, we thank uh, Mitch for the work he has uh, done and continues to do, and we are reintroducing the organ uh, into our worship today and sort of preparation as we practice to get ready for June 14, and we're glad, uh, thankful that Ruth has come back to bless us with her gifts as well. And so as you prepare to uh, give your gifts, we will enjoy this hymn, Breathe on Me, Breath of God. I hope you will be blessed by the memory of this beautiful song of praise. Our gifts will be received. Jill Tewinkle, my wife, sends her greetings. I'm sure you would much rather see her smiling face here uh, than mine, but she has had uh, a week of relaxation and fun with her sister, uh, so we're blessing her as she is blessed with a time of relaxation, and so today you get to hear me, um, but we invite you to prepare your hearts to receive the word. Let us pray. Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. Jesus Christ, Son of God, you are welcome here. Holy Father, you are welcome here. As we hear you speak now, Lord, we pray that in these words you will breathe into us passion, and compassion. Now as we turn, Lord, to your holy word, both as it is read and as it is preached, we pray that the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts will be acceptable and pleasing in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. 
The word of the Lord for today comes to us from the Gospel according to John, chapter 20, verses 19 through 23. Uh, This is the uh, evening of Easter uh, in John. This is John's Pentecost experience, uh, and so we now turn to the Gospel according to John, beginning at verse 19. On that evening of the first day of the week when the disciples were together with the doors locked for fear of Jewish leaders, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. The disciples were overjoyed when they saw the Lord. Again, Jesus said, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, I am sending you. And with that, he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive anyone's sins, their sins are forgiven. If you do not forgive them, they are not forgiven. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Life begins with breath. To live is to have breath. To have breath is to live. The scientific term for a breath is respiration. It has two parts, inspiration, that taking in of air, and expiration, the breathing air out. Just as we need to breathe to live, Our spirits need inspiration to come alive. We have come to learn that the process of expiration, breathing out, is a powerful act. Even loudly talking or singing will send out droplets of stuff in our bodies six feet away. There is power in a single breath to change, to transform those whom it reaches. Now, you might suspect that I'm going down the path of talking about COVID-19 and its spread by breathing on someone, but I am not going down that path. I am instead talking today about the power of a single breath when it is breathed by a man, the Son of God, Jesus Christ. When Jesus breathes out He is sending into us the Spirit. And the world is changed. God's expiration, breathing out, is our inspiration. The oldest tellers of our creation knew this. They attribute the start of life to breath, not our breath, but the breath of God. In Genesis 2, verse 7, we read, Then the Lord God formed a man from the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and the man became a living being. It is against this ancient backdrop which Jesus paints this simple picture of breathing into, of inspiration, to convey that new life was being imparted as he breathed the Spirit into the disciples. This then is like a second creation. That's what Resurrection Day is. That's what Pentecost becomes, a day of new creation. With the expiration of the Creator's breath and the inspiration by the created. That's what we do today. That's what we celebrate today. This powerful image was undoubtedly behind C.S. Lewis's imagery in the Chronicles of Narnia, 
in the second book, Prince Caspian, it's also in the resurrection scene in The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe. Uh, if you're looking for something, if you have like teenage children and they want something good for them to read, uh, encourage them to read the Chronicles of Narnia. If you have small children, you might want to start acquainting them with this beautiful story. It's got wonderful allegories for all parts of faith. But this one uh, comes from the second book, Prince Caspian. And in it, Lewis is describing Aslan, who you see on the screen, uh, this oversized lion, who is, uh, for C.S. Lewis in the Chronicles, the Christ figure. And he is speaking in Prince Caspian with the children. And there are four children that are uh, engaged in the first couple of books. Uh, and so he's speaking to them in order, Lucy, the youngest, and then uh, Peter and Edward, the two boys. But he finally arrives uh, to speak to Susan, the oldest girl. And she has been struggling at this point in the story with her emotions of guilt and shame for not believing she saw Aslan had come to help but she refused to believe it. She refused to believe that Aslan was there, that he had come back again. And so she's dealing with the guilt and the shame for all of the trouble that had gone, uh, come upon them by her refusal to believe in Aslan. And so Aslan now has come to her. He's come to help them in battle. But first he needs to get her back. And then this scene happens. Then, after an awful pause, the deep voice of Aslan said, Susan. Susan made no answer, but the others thought she was crying. You have listened to fears, child, said Aslan. Come. Let me breathe on you. Forget them. Are you brave again? There is grace. There is transformation. There is sanctification. The power of the breath of the lion that changes Susan from the guilty, ashamed, into a powerful warrior, one of the queens of Narnia. It gives us courage, that breath, which replaces fear. It moves us outside of locked rooms, setting us free from the fears of what lurks outside or, or what's trying to break in. It releases us from shame and guilt. It encourages us to take the first steps of a new mission which extends to the ends of the earth, even Sheboygan. We cannot do this mission on our own. This mission that Jesus sends us on, Jesus tells the disciples that they are about to begin an amazing new adventure, building up the kingdom of God on earth. But he knows they cannot do it alone. No one can. It requires supernatural powers. And just as the Father sends the Son, so the Son sends the disciples, so He sends you and me. We who have committed our lives to serving the Father along with the Son. The Father and the Son send us with the power of the Spirit to deliver a message of grace designed to lead us to reconciliation with God. That is our work. The work of the church, the work of every disciple, is reconciling grace. John Calvin says the principal design of preaching the gospel is that men may be reconciled to God, and this is accomplished by the unconditional pardon of sins. The principal objective of preaching the gospel is that you know your sins are forgiven and that you forgive each other. Calvin writes, the gospel makes the salvation of people to consist in the forgiveness of sins through free grace. Don't let anyone tell you otherwise. This is the source of the other blessing God bestows. The whole doctrine of godliness, how we should act. The spiritual building of the church, 
and our mission rests on this foundation that God, having acquitted us from all sins, adopts us to be his children by free grace. That's how we stand before the Lord, because of the grace of God the Father through the Son, Jesus Christ, conveyed to us by the power of the Holy Spirit. And this knowledge that our sins do not come into the remembrance of God, Calvin writes, is the knowledge of salvation. When you can finally and fully comprehend that your sins do not come into the remembrance before God, then you have begun to understand salvation today. Salvation isn't something that only happens after you die. You can experience the joy of salvation today if you will let the Spirit breathe into you the knowledge that you have been forgiven. In fact, you've been, your sins have been forgotten by the Lord. We fail if we try this mission on our own. Should we even dare to try it? But if we allow Jesus to breathe on us, we can do marvelous acts filled with the mercy and grace of God. So in today's environment, will we, like Susan in Narnia, allow the great Aslan, the powerful Lion of Judah, Jesus Christ, to breathe on us? Or will we insist on proper social distancing? That would be a convenient excuse, wouldn't it? No, Jesus, please stand a bit further back. You know, more than six feet, please, because I don't actually want that to get all the way to me. But the truth is, the only thing that the breath of Jesus will fill your spiritual lungs with is the breath of life, not any life-destroying virus. You will be given power, Jesus promises in Acts, when the Spirit comes upon you. We do maintain proper distancing from each other now in this time, not wanting the type of inspiration that will potentially harm us, but we know that the only type of transformation which Jesus offers is his expiration, which is the inspiration of the saints who agree to be transformed as the Spirit of God descends upon our hearts as we breathe in the breath of God. So John reports to us just one but an amazing transformation that happens when we breathe in the life of the Spirit. The power of forgiveness. I give you fair warning now. This may be one of those that's good for other people but not for me sermon points. When I tell this to people I often get that. Oh, I'm not doing that. It can't be what the Bible means. This is one of those points when I preach it that I, uh, I'm guessing that there are going to be many people who say what I have called in my own mind a yes, but reaction. Yes, Pastor Well said, but I'm not doing that. It asks too much. You don't understand me. You don't understand my problems. You don't understand what you're asking me to do. I don't at all. That's why we need the Holy Spirit. But friends, if you decide to keep listening to the rest of this sermon, you have been warned. Spirit-formed forgiveness, that which springs from the power of the Spirit breathed into you, is so powerful, so transformational, that it must be preached with a warning. I wonder if you will allow Jesus to breathe on you after you hear how it might transform you. Or will you cover your face? Will you back up to, say, ten feet? I'd like to illustrate the power of spirit-formed forgiveness with the well-known story of Bishop Bienvenu and the thief Jean Valjean, as told by Victor Hugo in Les Miserables. Jean Valjean, the thief, has been a guest in the home of the bishop, where he, while a guest there, one evening steals a valuable set of silver forks and spoons. He runs from the house, but he's later caught by the gendarmes, the local police, 
who uh, returned the thief Valjean to be once again greeted by the bishop. Ah, here you are, the bishop exclaimed, looking at Jean Valjean. I'm glad to see you. Well, but how is this? I gave you two candlesticks, too, which are silver like the rest, and for which you certainly can get 200 francs. Why did you not carry them away with your forks and spoons? Jean Valjean opened his eyes wide and stared at the venerable bishop, as you see on the screen, with an expression which no human tongue can render any account of. Monsignor, said the brigadier, what this man says is true then? He was walking away like a man who was running. He had this silver and he told you, interposed the bishop with a smile, that it had been given to him by a kind old fellow of a priest with whom he had passed the night. I, I see how the matter stands. And you brought him back here. It is a mistake. In that case, replied the brigadier, we can let him go? Certainly, replied the bishop. Is it true that I am to be released? Valjean says in an almost inarticulate voice as though he were talking in his sleep. Yes, thou art released. My friend, resumed the bishop, before you go, here are your candlesticks. Take them. He stepped into the chimney piece, took the two silver candlesticks and brought them to Jean Valjean. Jean Valjean was trembling with every limb. He took the two candlesticks mechanically and with a bewildered air. Now, said the bishop, Go in peace. Then Hugo describes the aftermath of grace which seeks transformation of the forgiven one. The bishop continues, Do not forget, never forget, that you have promised to use this money in becoming an honest man. Jean Valjean, who had no recollection of ever having promised anything, remains speechless. The bishop resumes with solemnity, Jean Valjean, my brother, you no longer belong to evil, but to good. It is your soul I buy from God, from you. I withdraw it from black thoughts and the spirit of perdition and I give it back to God. Here is the meaning of the forgiveness of sins, of letting them go, of not retaining them. It is to relieve another of their sins and to set both your soul and their souls in God's hands. You may have every right to retain the sin of someone rather than releasing them from their sin. You may have that right, as the bishop did. But if you will let Christ today breathe on you his life-producing breath, by the power of the Spirit, you will be able to help some poor, guilty soul escape the darkness, the threat of hell, and to be released by grace into the mercy of forgiveness. God's forgiveness, which forgets 
and yet calls us to be changed for good, to transform us, to sanctify us, to make us holy. When we pronounce the forgiveness of sins, we pronounce that which has been done in Christ alone. We are mere instruments playing the tune of heaven's greatest anthem. But I want to assure you this day, this exact moment, that you may be rid of your doubts, of your fears about the state of your standing before God. Hear then the news that every heart like Valjean's longs to hear. Yes, you are indeed released. You are set free. So receive from my hand, friends, as if God himself stretched out his hand from heaven. Receive the Spirit's comfort. Your sins are forgiven. Your sins are forgiven. Your sins are forgotten. Now go and sin. No more. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make His face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord turn His face toward you and give you His peace. So God says you shall put my name on my people and I will bless them. Friends, accept God's love. Be confident in your faith and hope and carry the light of the cross by the breath of the Spirit and bring forgiveness that will release you and someone from darkness into its light. Go in peace. God bless you. Amen. Amen.